watching Disaster Peace Theater. This guy's hilarious. He's funny. He's fantastic. You need to watch the show all the time. Tell all your friends about it. Enjoy. What's up, guys? So it's Wednesday, April 14th, 2010, and I've got a ground shaking, earth rattling, rock'em, roll'em type show for you guys today. And I'm gonna get right into the stories for you. Cardinal Terciso Bertone, try saying that three times fast, he's got himself in a little bit of trouble with the gays. It seems that they're up in arms over the comments that he's made recently about how he feels that gays treat their children like pets. Kids shouldn't be pets. There are there things that need to be raised by a man and a woman. And his comments about pedophilia and being gay in some of the church scandals. He's saying that there's a big difference between being celibate and being homosexual and having pedophile tendencies and pedophile lustful thoughts. I don't understand why the gay people are up in arms. This is absolutely correct. You have to be a pedophile and gay in order to molest children. That's how it works. It seems like gay people think that once you announce that you're gay, that you're in this pristine club, that only what you think is correct is correct and what everybody else thinks about it is wrong. That's not correct. That's not how things work. What's happening is gay pedophiles Pedophiles are becoming priests so they can molest children. They're not saying that all gay people like to molest kids. You guys need to get it straight and stop being so uber sensitive. We understand that certain people view gays as evil and ugly, dark creatures that, you know, jump from rooftops to rooftops looking for buttholes to spear. I mean, the people think that, yes. But most of us rational thinking people understand that gay people just like be loved like everybody else. In the butt, but just like everybody else. So I really don't think they should be up in arms about the Cardinal's comments. I mean, he's just being truthful. There really is no correlation between being celibate and molesting children and pedophilia. It just so happens that the pedophile gay guys are getting into this religion that celibacy happens to be one of its particular rules. So in their mind, they're pretty much saying, that's fine. I can be celibate and not have sex with women because that's not what I came here for in the first place. Wow, the scandals just keep coming out left and right, left and right. So Hollywood actor Steven Seagal, once prominent kung fu master and such hits as Mark for Death and Mark for Death 2, Under Siege. I just noticed something. If you click on the links in the sidebar, you'll see a picture of this guy. It looks like he has a herpy on his lip. I don't know if this has anything to do with the story I'm about to tell you, but I just wanted you to notice that. But anyway, he's being sued by a former employee that says she was being used as a sex slave and being held against her will and not being paid money and not giving great hand jobs and blow jobs to the man Steven Seagal. She also claims that Steven Seagal had two other women that he was holding uh, as sex slaves in this harem of sexy kung fu madness that he had going on. Look, if you're a woman... And you agree to come into a relationship with the guy. Because that's what this is. This isn't a sex ring. It's a relationship. Because what happens is when a guy has a girl, he's pretty much paying her for sex anyway. You women have, have warped the idea of relationships to say, oh, well, I'm in this, and you're getting sex and money, and say, oh, no, but this is just a relationship. Well, then, then that's what it is. It's a relationship, okay? So he's having a multifaceted relationship with you and two other women. He's taking care of you. You're staying at his house. You're having the privilege of being with a hot chop sake star. What else could you ask for? You want money? He's right there. You want sex? He's right there. Most women dream to be in a situation where they could be banging some B-list celebrity. But she's suing her for about $1 million. Steven Seagal's people are saying this is ludicrous, this is ridiculous, uh, these are ridiculous allegations. And when Steven gets a hold of her, he's going to put his left fist into her temple and pop her eye socket out. Well, so here's the story for all my alcohol abuse lovers. You potential AA members will be ecstatic to hear that a new beer is going to be coming to the States from Europe. The name of the company is called Brew Dogs, and the name of the beer is Tactical Nuclear Penguin. This beer has 32% more alcohol than your average beer. So just imagine this. Instead of buying a six-pack of beer, you can buy a six-pack of this beer, drink two beers, and be wasted. They say you're supposed to sip on it and savor it and drink it like it's a fine gin or a nice bottle of Chianti, or something that you would save with some nice cheese logs and maybe a summer sausage roll. I do not see this happening with beer. I see this being the cause of about five head-on collisions and about four or five families being 
killed by just drunk people running around and beating the hell out of people with foreign objects. That's what I see. This is basically liquid crack. So if you want to get your hands on some liquid crack, I post the link in the sidebar where you can find this brew dog ale beer crack, whatever you want to call it, and get yourself some. Okay, here's a story that scared the shit out of me, and I hope it doesn't scare the hell out of you too. There's a gigantic problem in hospitals. About 100,000 people a year die from getting some kind of disease or something that they got from being in the hospital. Some people caught pneumonia and all kind of other disgusting diseases, not just airborne, but also from the things that they use in the hospital. They have to adhere to the basic standards of hygiene, They're not disinfecting patients properly, They're not sterilely handling the equipment and properly using antibiotics. These things will cut down the infections that people are catching from these hospitals. So it's almost like a catch-22. Oh my God, I've got some kind of medical problem. Where do I go? Oh, to a hospital. Oh wait, I go to the hospital, I get cured of what I have, and in the process of me getting cured, they give me something else that could potentially kill me later. Wow. I mean, simple solution. Every hospital, every day, should have a nice coating of bleach just applied to every wall everywhere, every day. Or just burn it down. Just burn the hospital down. This wouldn't teach the germs any lessons, but the hospitals are wise enough and say, listen, we got to start cleaning up before we get our hospital burned down. Now, that's a little extreme, but I doubt that sounds extreme to someone who went to the hospital and contracted some sort of disease or something that they never had because the people that were supposed to be taking care of them, someone somewhere along the line didn't follow the rules, causing you to catch some sort of disease or something, I mean, I I'm sure you would be pretty upset. All right, fellas, I got some good news for you. We are one step closer to having a Viagra-like pill for women, which is fantastic news because now you can stop slipping roofies in their drinks. You just invite her back to the house, make her a sandwich, Crack one of them little pills open and spread it over the peanut butter. Put it in between. Let her eat it. 20 minutes later, going at it. I think scientists are saying that this pill is going to cost about $30 million per pill so women won't be getting raped left and right all over America. It can't be any less than that. If it's less than that, I would buy a whole bunch of grind them up, go into a women's gym, and just blow it into the air conditioning system, and just take off all my clothes, and just stand there and wait to see what happens. I probably still wouldn't get laid, but it would be fun to watch all the women run around and run away. Then i cry and go eat some donuts. And for my last story, this goes out to all you chicken lovers. KFC has just come out with a sandwich called the Double Down. What it is is two original recipe fillets, bacon, pepper jack cheese, Swiss cheese and kernel sauce. Basically a heart attack waiting to happen. I have never seen a sandwich so fat in my life. How could you possibly eat? Why would you eat a sandwich that doesn't even have bread on it? All it is is just meat and cheese and more meat and unhealthy for you. It's, it's got to be terrible. I'm sure it tastes delicious, but it's got to be terrible for you. Any person willing to put their lives in jeopardy and eat a sandwich like this has got to be a questionable individual. Why would you even buy something like that and put it to your mouth and say something like, I'm going to eat me a sandwich that doesn't even have bread on it. It's just two patties with cheese. You got to be a fat, just greasy, nasty. You just want to eat until your mouth is full, until your belly is about to bust open chicken and cheese, meat and beef. What's wrong with you? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can't understand it. I can't. Something crazy about that. Crazy. Mm. Click the links in the sidebar. You can see more about the sandwich. It's great. If I had one, I wouldn't share with you. But I let you watch me eat it. My thoughts on the KFC Double Down. It was pretty good. It was very tasty. I like the cheese in the middle with the bacon. It was just a little awkward eating something that didn't have bread on it. But I like chicken very much. I don't know if that's because I'm black and I have to like chicken. I suggest if you buy one, get a pack of buns. That way you can rip it in half and then put it on the buns and have two sandwiches. But overall, I'd give it a four and a half out of a five. This has been your daily dose of Disaster Peace Theater. I'm Disaster, and I'll see you here again real soon. Peace.